Before we start today's vlog, I just wanted to let everyone know that our Navigable Waterways map is back in stock. I've put a link in the description below. A huge thank you to everyone who's already purchased one. I was a little overwhelmed by the amount we sold and by all the wonderful feedback and comments we've had. We are still in Rufford. We've been here for two nights and this is thoroughly pleasant. And today we are travelling the short distance to Tarleton to prepare for the Ribble Link tomorrow. Yep. It is actually really quite pleasant here. I really like it. And there is a fairly short walk, I guess about six or seven minutes, to a bus that takes a surprisingly short amount of time <laughs> to drop you off at a very large Tesco's. So I was able to get some shopping done and uh, pick up some kindling. Also, if you need petrol kindling, any form of, you know, small ice cream bar, frozen pizza, or gunsmithing, it's all available here. In one location. Alright, anything else to add? Nah, told the truth. We're going to stop at um, the service point, just two bridges up. There's a swing bridge, or a lift bridge, or a swing bridge. Swing bridge, I think. Just here. And then beyond that is bridge 8. A, where eight. there are, or is it 8? I think it's 8A. Anyway, where there are, um, depending on whether or not you're using Open Canal Plan or a 12-year-old Nicholson's Guide or the CRT's trust? own website. None of which are reliable. Obviously. None of which are reliable and none of which have the same services listed. So we don't really know what's there. No offense, Canal, Open Canal Plan. But. No. Um, but that one's reliant on people actually posting what's correct and, you know, it's, it's... And we don't contribute, so we shouldn't really complain. I'm not complaining. All right, let's just get going. All right, we're getting going now. When we arrive at the Sparks Bridge services, we find toilets, showers, Elsan, pump out, water and waste. However, the showers aren't working and we don't need water, so it's just a quick stop to drop off our wee and waste. George and I continue to walk from here. What you can't see is the towpath actually goes through a field, a very waterlogged field, and we are ankle deep in mud. At this point the towpath gets even worse, so Michael stops to pick us up and we ride the last mile to Tolton. The moorings are fairly busy and the first space we try is too small for us. Luckily we fit into the last available slot, although when more boats arrive they have to double more. I make the decision not to do the crossing with Michael. Lorna from the YouTube channel London Boat Girl will be joining us for the trip, so I plan to get the bus. The lady from the boat that moors next to us is getting the bus too, so we can make the journey together. The Ribble Link was opened in 2002 and links the Leeds and Liverpool Canal with the Lancaster Canal. The reason I'm so nervous is because to do the Ribble Link you need to travel on two tidal rivers and through Savick Brook, which is essentially a drainage ditch and very silted and shallow. The whole journey takes about seven hours and passage is strictly controlled by the Canal and River Trust. There are only a certain number of days in the year when the tidal conditions are suitable and even then the weather may prevent crossings. First we will drop down the river lock just north of Tolton and travel against the tide along the River Douglas for about four miles. When we reach the River Rebel we'll turn right around the Asland Lamp. At this point we'll be travelling with the tide. After about three and a half miles on the Ribble, we'll turn left into Suffolk Brook, still with the tide and with a limited window to cross the sea lock. There are strict instructions not to cut the corners, as the rivers are very silted and there are submerged structures in the marshland. Once through the sea lock, there are eight more locks to do before we can moor up. Mm. 
Morning. Morning. So we're in Tarleton. Is this Tarleton? Ta yeah. Is that how you pronounce it? Tarleton or Tarleton? Yeah, I'm not really sure. Some, yeah. We're at the end of the Ribble. Um, no, what am I talking about? The Ribble. Well, the Ribble links that way. We're at the end of the Rufford branch of the Leeds and Liverpool, heading north through the lock. That'll take us onto the River Douglas. Once we're onto the River Douglas, um, basically we go straight and then right and then left. And that's it. It's not that hard. Simple. Yeah. Um, we are going on a somewhat low tide, although it is Friday the 13th and there is a full moon. So people who are amenable to superstition, be very afraid. To the rest of us, we're going to be fine. So, absent anything going absolutely stupidly wrong, will be done in a couple hours. There are five other boats travelling with us today, and the first two enter the river lock. The Canal and River Trust staff give a quick briefing in the lock and discover that neither of the first boats has the contact numbers they require in case of emergency, so there's some delay while they take these down. Once the first two boats have left and the lock is refilled, narrowboats Serenity and Perseverance enter the lock. Out comes Serenity onto the River Douglas, closely followed by Lorna and Michael on Perseverance. I'm so nervous for them at this stage as I watch them push against the tide down the River Douglas and towards certain danger. In truth, I feel rather silly opting to get the bus, as I know the crossing will be fine. I use George as a bit of an excuse, but I don't think he would have enjoyed the crossing. We have to push about four miles down the River Douglas against the tide. For the first mile and a half, the river's narrower and so the water moves quicker, so we have to give the engine a bit of chuff. It's obviously a bit swollen against the muddy banks, but there are no waves and the current is very manageable. We watch the last two boats descend the lock, one of which is getting a tow across the link as they don't think its engine is powerful enough to cross under its own steam. Meanwhile, Michael and Lorna are making progress along the Douglas and past the moorings at Hesketh Bank. The Douglas widens noticeably as we approach the junction with the Ribble. You can see the huge hangars of the Wharton Aerodrome on the other side long before you even get a glimpse of Aslan Lamp. The Handy Skipper's Guide says to aim for those hangars, but I'm a bit surprised to see a Eurofighter Typhoon take off on full afterburners as it practices touch and goes. Sadly it's too small in the sky to make much of an impression on the GoPros. The line of boats have spread out quite a bit at this point, so we get a good view of the lead boat as it turns at the lamp, long before we can really make out the structure sticking out of the water. Finally we get to the lamp and can make the hard right turn onto the ribble. That means we're going with the tide now, so there's quite a bit of a speed boost, though still not as fast as the fighter jet overhead. There's Lorna's camera making a guest appearance in our shot. Make sure you go and watch her video of the crossing too if you haven't already seen it. We'll put a link in the description below. The Ribble is wide and flat and there's basically no traffic, though there is some excitement when the towing boat behind us decides to cut short of the Aslan lamp precisely as we've been instructed not to do. I'm sure he knows what he's doing, but out of grim curiosity I keep turning back to see if the small narrowboat on tow isn't so sure. 
As we approach the turn into Savick Brook, the towboat and his cargo pass us on the right. They swing about and untie the lines, and the cheeky little narrowboat steals our spot in line. The towing boat whips about and passes us again. He's in a rush to get back to Tarleton before the tide turns. If he misses the lock, he'll be stuck on the river and forced to spend the night in Preston Docks, and we'll have to pay their mooring fees. He certainly doesn't hang about. the Savick Brook. It's a brook. It's Savick. Um, it's not really very shallow. I thought it was going to be more shallow than this. Hopefully it doesn't get too shallow as we get further forward. Luckily, we're on the high tide. It hasn't reversed yet, so I guess we're on the water as high as it's going to get. So. Maybe it has reversed a little bit. Hard to tell. It's not really going backwards yet. Once past the rotating sea lock, the Savick Brook is really just narrow, winding, and muddy. Around the first hard turn, there's a road bridge, underneath which some damned fool has planted four huge iron pilings that make navigating even harder. As we make our way up to the locks, there are several small traffic jams as we all struggle to negotiate the tight turns and frequent groundings. We ended up getting a lift from Tarleton to the top lock. It takes a while for us to walk down to the bottom lock and we end up arriving at the same time as the first two boats. The rest of the boats aren't too far behind. Next into the lock is Serenity with the boat that was being towed. Finally it's Perseverance's turn along with the last boat. There are no moorings on Savick Brook, so you have to travel up the eight locks right away. The Canal and River Trust staff lock the locks once we're through. This means that as we're the last boats going through, we get a lot of help from them.
The pounds between the locks are very narrow and overgrown, so it's nice to know we won't be meeting any boats coming the other way. At this stage we catch up with the boats in front so I walk ahead to give them a hand on the lock. Five locks down, three to go. The final three locks are a staircase, and the brook at the bottom of them is too narrow and shallow to allow a boat to make the almost 180 degree turn required to enter them the normal way. So instead we are forced to back into the bottom of the staircase. I let the other boat go first so they can bash around without me in the way, then I show them how reversing is done. At this stage there are two boats in the top lock, two in the middle, and us two in the bottom lock, so there's a bit of a delay as the top boats move out. When the gates open behind us we reverse together into the middle lock. And then it's into the top and final lock. We're now at the junction with the Lancaster Canal. If you turn left under the bridge, you can travel north all the way to Tewitfield. We're going to turn right and travel as far as you can go towards Preston. We had hoped some more here for the night, but both spots are taken.
This is the end of the canal. It used to go all the way to Preston, but not anymore. Preston right. actually, we're beyond here. Yeah, we've passed here and we've gone to Preston. <laughs> you survived the Ripple Link, how was it? It was fine. It was overblown. It was, yeah, I don't want to say underwhelming, but it, it was underwhelming. Really? I, um, yeah, there's not much to see. It's quite flat, um, just lots of empty fields. It was good fun, obviously, and it was nice to spend the time with Michael. Um, talking about all the crazy things that we talk about uh but i think if anyone was scared to do it i would say don't be scared to do it because yeah no honestly i've definitely done worse things than that yeah um, yeah like definitely there was there was some interesting stuff we got to see a couple of fighter jets we got to see um oh, really? yeah, yeah that was cool yeah they took off from the airport they're there and so there's like oh look at that there's a what appears to be probably a euro fighter largely once we started going it was just pushing against some current there's some logs in the water you got to look out for but once you pass the logs you just go and you go and you go and then there's yeah. big fields and bigger fields and some cattle it is a little bit hard to see the Aslan lamp. Was it good that the boat's in front of you? Yeah, it was yeah, helpful that there were boats in front of us. It wasn't obvious at all. It, yeah, it, I mean, it turns out once you actually get there, it's fairly obvious because it's got a little yellow sign that says Aslan lamp. <laughs> but as you get closer, depending on the angle you're at, you, it just sort of is a stick coming out of the water. I had this image in my head before I saw sort of a drawing of it that it was going to be like a lighthouse type thing. It's mm. just... It's just like a tripod right. with a little stick on the top. Followed the instructions. They told me to kind of head towards the aerodrome until you see the lamp and then turn right. So, you know, saw the boat turn in front of me, the first one. And until it was behind the lamp, I wouldn't have noticed that it was there. Right. Yeah, I think right. there's a possibility if you were going on your own, depending on where you were, you could miss it until it was a bit late and then struggled to get around in time. Yeah. But once you sort of but knew the, where it the was. The turn in the current was fine. No, the turn in the current was fine. The only, the, a boat came past a few minutes later, a speedboat, and it gave us a bit of a wake. So there was a little bit of like, ooh, oh, that was exciting. Oh, that was the excitement yeah. of the day. Today, without any significant wind, um, yeah, there was pushing against the current. And then as you turn at the lamp, you're, you're suddenly with the current pushing you. So you go from being revved up and kind of struggling to, oh, uh, I need to turn down the revs or I'm going to shoot way <laughs> forward. Um, it definitely wasn't the roller coaster like the Thames was. Yeah. You know. no. It's funny because um, I got to the lock just before the first boats and they came in and then they were like, that's the worst bit. And then the second set of boats came in and they were like, that was the worst bit. And oh, then yeah. you came in and you were like, that, that was, was the, the worst, worst bit. Yeah. About yeah. Savick Brook yeah. was by the far, worst, definitely. Yeah, by far yeah. the first the first couple of, or mile and a bit of Savick Brook before the bottom lock was definitely the worst part mm. of the day in because terms of the, of the very tight turns. Um, the bridge that has four just big I beams sticking up out of the water, like there's just there's just for some reason four large metal pylons that just jut up vertically and narrow down the amount mm -hmm. that you can travel through. It's funny because you had you had like three hours of travelling to get there, and it's like yeah we've made it, and then there's another three hours of of just of tedious locks. Yeah. yeah, and it was really tedious. Like mm. the the reversing lock. Once we got up past the first, what I guess it was five locks, four, four eight locks. Eight in total. Eight locks. Mm. So once we got past the first five. five, and we got to the basin where you have to reverse into the staircase, and then the staircase was was much more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'd say the biggest challenges of the day were Savick Brook, Savick Brook, Savick Brook, and the reverse into the lock. Right. Yeah. It's funny because um, you left as the fourth boat, but you arrived at the f as the fifth boat because there was that one boat that got a tow. And yeah. so they kind of. The guy who was him. doing the tow was in a hurry to get there and back before he ran out of tide. Yeah. yeah. So he was just, I'm just going to cut across behind Aslan Lamp, the exact place where we were told not to cut. <laughs> so I'm just looking back, going, Well, I hope somebody's looking in front because I'm not looking in front. I'm just trying to figure out whether or not I've got to turn around. <laughs> no, but he, he knew what he was he doing. Was so, doing. Yeah. But, um, so that meant you were the second, you were the third set going through the locks, um, which 
was annoying because we were the last, but it was also good because we had the Canal and River Trust people on all. Yeah, moving up all the locks. One of the locks, I think we did on our own, but they helped us through all the others. So that was yeah, they were really nice guys. Yeah, really, really nice. So in a way, being last was wasn't that bad because when you came into the bottom lock of the staircase, the first boats were only in the top lock of that. There was you were in the bottom one. This middle boats were in the middle one, and the top boats were in the top one. So they had to wait for quite a while. So they. Like being first, you don't have that much of a yeah. speed advantage. So yeah, we got lucky with the weather. Yeah, Friday the thirteenth. <laughs> oh, I thought it was quite cold. I've Let's got two jumpers on, coffin. and Michael's just still Let's in that same t-shirt. Put the nail in the coffin. <laughs> I'm in the coffin the actually, and say, um, it's cold up north because a couple of days ago it was really cold. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, you have to wrap up. But... No, I, I found it fine. Like there was more wind coming up at us as we were doing up the Douglas. So once we Oh, once, the first bit. once we made the turn, I was like, I went from being kind of chilly to, oh yeah, no, this is nice. <laughs> it was really sunny though, so it was yeah. good, yeah. If you went out and you drew bad luck on the weather and you got... You'd have a completely different experience. If you got bad wind, bad rain, and a higher tide, that would suck. Yeah. But it wouldn't be a roller coaster. Yeah. It wouldn't be, you know, a great exciting ride. It would be, man, that's a big bow wave we're pushing... And then, you know, boy, I want to get up to Ebbetbrook before this thing empties, because <laughs> that is the part that that would worry me, is having a, a longer boat or a mm-hmm. wider boat trying to get up through that really winding as narrow bends as the tide mm-hmm. was changing. Mm-hmm. Anything else, if you arrive on time and it's it's slack and you're just going in on a smooth tide, I think, yeah. So yeah, that no was problem. definitely the biggest challenge. Yeah, and I oh. said to you at one point, didn't I, it's good that your boat isn't any longer than it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the yeah. boat that was with us in the locks was a bit longer, wasn't it? Yeah, a couple of feet longer mm. and they had some trouble getting around. And I wouldn't want to be any longer. I wouldn't want to be any wider. And I still, like, I rammed into a couple of the walls. Um, I, I pushed us up onto some silt at one point. Mm. It was it was definitely unpleasant going through that section. It was, you know, it was really beautiful, and that was nice. Like, the, the walls are green, and that was cool. But um, but yeah, the actual driving was like, man, this mm. is a little bit annoying. Especially because yeah, the boat in yeah. front of me kept kind of stopping. Yes. And the, he'd stop and then make his turn and then go. And so I'd have to, like, wait. Oh, you were doing extra. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But... Well, thank you for coming in. Well, thank you for having me. Meaning I didn't have to do it. <laughs> so it was a good day. But if you're thinking about it, coming up the River Link, don't worry about it. Just book in and go. Next year, because it's booked up this year. Yeah, next year. <laughs> so, from the three of us, thanks for watching. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Go and subscribe to Lorna's channel um, and watch her video of the River Link. In Which, case anybody yeah. doesn't know, we should say what your channel is, right? Um, London Boat Girl, London Boat Girl. Uh, um, and we should be bringing them out at the same time. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and if you come to us from London Boat Girl, hi, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the channel, <laughs> and uh, click that bell if you want to get notifications. We say goodbye to Lorna and then head back to the top of the locks. The Canal and River Trust guys have said we can moor there for the night. Mm-hmm.